Yeah, hi guys. How are you doing? Good. Oh, okay, that's great. It's a bit rainy. So, okay, you know, uh, I'm really glad to be here. Uh, this is my first uh, Kubernetes meetup in Singapore. So, and I twice proud to stand in front of you uh, and start speaking about new topic. So, uh, according to the, my plan, I decided to talk about Helm and is it reasonable tool in general. Uh, so I decided to use uh, the Shakespeare's classic and use this title like to help or not to help. It's kind of a question for us and I hope we will find the answer for it. And uh, then, you know, I realized oh, we have some issue with speaker. The curry is not working. Okay, okay. Visual next page? Yes, please. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, emoji is always uh, fixing the problem in general. So, and then I realized that the topic for this meetup is security and Kubernetes, and then I decided to focus on security in Helm. So today we will talk more about security in Helm and how, and how to make your Helm more secure. So, uh, my first question, and by the way, I have this nice sticker pack, and I will share with, with you for the right, so just for answers. So feel free, and don't be shy to answer the questions. So I will try to ask a few questions during my talk. So the first question, is not for stickers, uh, how many of you have used uh, Helm in general? Or try it? Wow, wow, it's a lot, really a lot. And how many of you uh, use Helm in production? Wow, fantastic, guys, fantastic. Okay, so we are we're ready to share stickers with the next question. Okay, okay so uh, as mentioned, so my name is Alex, and I am development lead uh, here in Singapore in Chainstack. And you know, DevOps is my passion, so for more than eight years in IT and software development, I fully realized that uh, DevOps is a really nice thing which help us to bring a better software for our customers. Yeah, that's really great. And I want to say a few words about our company, Chainstack. So Chainstack, it's a multi-protocol uh, blockchain and multi-cloud platform as a service which allows you rapidly create, manage and deploy your decentralized solutions and for this uh, experience, our dev team use Kubernetes and Helm, so it help us to uh, provide this service, and of course we really love Helm and Kubernetes, and that's why I'm here and talking with you. Uh, so, uh, by the way, we are searching for talents and hiring, so if you're a system engineer, or if you like DevOps, so feel free to find me, or I don't know, DM me on Twitter, or GitHub, so don't be shy. So let's go to agenda. As I mentioned, we will focus on a security topic, right? But before I decided to revise all information about functional Helm, because I guess it's quite useful. Of course, I see that you heavily use these tools, but uh, let's repeat it. Then I will show you and share with you some a thing that I called hidden gems uh, in Helm. So it's uh, nice tips and ideas that you can try today. Uh, then we'll focus on security. And finally, I will wrap up my talk uh, with the future of Helm and we'll mention a few alternative tools. And of course, we'll, uh, we'll be happy to answer any questions at the end. So, uh, Helm, right? I guess you know what will be next. Uh, who can guess? Uh, and I will share sticker bar. So just raise your hand. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah. Till it. I, I don't know. It may be wrong, but you will you will have at least the sticker pack. Was it like a first person? You know, first time, first also. Yeah. Uh, by the way, screw it. I mean, so uh, let's start from Joe. You, I guess you know that uh, what is Kubernetes? So let, let's improve the, 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 the problem. What is Kubernetes? Who knows, guys? Don't be shy. Okay, see, see. Yeah? 
Oh, what is it? Oh, uh, okay, that's good, that's good. Okay, thank you. So, uh, okay, the correct answer. What is Kubernetes? Kubernetes is, okay, we have another option. No, no? Yeah, please. It's, uh, it, it's super complicated, but you're right, I guess. Okay, okay. So, yeah, yeah? for pilot. Wow, that's great, yeah. So, okay, finally, correct answer. What is Kubernetes? Kubernetes is another abstraction physical level to deploy your WordPress. I guess, I guess you got it, I guess you got it. So, yeah, let's, let's go to, no, let's go to Helm, it's a bad thing, but let's talk about Helm. So, this is obviously package manager, right? So, it's covered by Cloud Native Computer Foundation, it, and you know, it's quite uh, interesting and popular tool right now. If you go to the GitHub, you will see that it's about 1K stars. Okay, it's not uh, React or Vue.js, but it's 1K stars for DevOps tool. I guess it's a nice. But it's not only a package manager. Helm addresses several needs. So I try to split it into four different categories or groups. So the first, it's all service, it's packaging, you know. So the next thing I call it complexity management, how you can fight with all complicated things in uh, uh, Kubernetes manifests. So the next thing, it's a huge thing, so it's application management in general, and how you can create your life cycle. And last uh, item, it's, uh, I call it batteries included. If you're not familiar with it, what is it? So it came from Python and Django world. By the way, I really love Python also and Golang. Uh, so it means that Django ships a lot of nice tools around the library in general and help you to resolve a lot of routine stuff. So help also provide uh, some nice ecosystem around uh, command line. Talking in details, of course, packaging, it's about creating your application and packaging. Packages, it's called charts, as you know. You can create your chart, you can upload your chart to repo, and you can download a lot of charts. So finally, you can create your sophisticated application and define different package dependencies for it. So that's it. Uh, talking about complexity, of course, we have templating and parameterization, right? to improve the manifests of Kubernetes. So talking about life cycle, finally you've got your uh, chart and you want to deploy it to the cluster. So all you need is uh, revisions, right? Because you want to repeat the section and sometimes you need to roll back it. So the next thing is hooks and application props. These guys help you to improve the control of your application life cycle. And talking about batteries, of course, it's plugin system. So uh, Helm have a lot of, let's say, has not a lot, many uh, different useful uh, plugins, and I will show one of them. But we will start with uh, some real example. What if I decide to install some popular application to my new brand new cluster? For example, Grafana. I guess uh, you and uh, you guys and me will go to Helm charts uh, on the GitHub and try to find from the list uh, Grafana, right? Maybe you will use some search, maybe you're like a guru on the GitHub, and you know it provides you about 270 charts right now. So uh, they located uh, in two different namespaces, stable and incubator. By the way, you need to, of course, enable incubator to make sure that uh, you can search it using uh, CLI, but you know, I really love GitHub, but sometimes it's technically not so convenient way to find your charts there. So let me introduce Helm Hub. Who knows about Helm Hub? Wow, that's nice, that's nice. That, that guy's quite experienced, I guess. So yeah, Helm, Helm Hub, what's it? First of all, it's a gorgeous interface. Yeah, you see? You see, it looks like it looks really nice. So you have search bar, and the main thing that it brings you more than 460 plus charts in from 15 different uh, outside repos. And really great news that you can suggest your own public repo to this hub. So all you need is create a PR with your repo. Uh, create repo in the Helm project on the GitHub, 
and you can join this nice hub. I guess it's really cool, so try it. It's, it's really nice. So another thing, it's how Helm integrated uh, with Open Service Broker. Who knows what the service broker? Well, the, the more people, well, that's, that's nice. So yeah, of course, the first question is, what are service brokers? Okay, I will also show them the example. So as you remember my joke about Kubernetes, it's all about deploying your uh, WordPress, right? So we want to deploy WordPress in our brand new cluster, and we have a problem. So the problem is that we need to decide which type of MySQL and how we're going to deploy. So the first option is to use help, of course, and find chart and install this chart to your cluster. But the question is who will, let's say, operate and maintain this uh, stateful thing inside your cluster. So another option is to create something from your service provider or cloud provider. For example, you can ask for manage it MySQL, right? But the problem is uh, that we need to manually uh, create this instance and then somehow store the credentials and put these credentials during the Helm installation. So here is our hero. It's a service broker plus some plugin for your cloud provider. By the way, you can find service broker on Helm Hub and install it into your cluster because literally it's uh, just another application for a cluster. So service broker can using plugin to your cloud provider like GCP, Azure, or Amazon, for example, it can create and provide some flavor, what you need, uh, store credentials, and then use it automatically when you want to deploy your WordPress. So you don't need to create your own uh, database inside your cluster. You can utilize cloud provider and reduce your manual work. So somehow, uh, Helm helps to glue service broker and your cloud provider resources. I guess it's also a nice new thing. So you also can try it. Uh, just uh, Google for service broker API integration and Helm. And the last thing about hidden gems, it's about repositories. Uh, I guess you know that Chart Museum is a default thing to create your public or private uh, repository for Helm. But uh, I want to introduce you a new tool uh, or kind of plugin. It's uh, Helm GCS. This plugin uh, can provide the ability to create your own repo and you can utilize authorization uh, using uh, Google service account or default credential. So how it works? Uh, you can install plugin from GitHub with standard command, like plugin install. Then you need to set up your uh, gcloud uh, and provide your service account to bucket, to Google bucket or Google storage. Then you can create and init the storage and then add repo. And that's it. I mean, then you can work it like uh, with Chart Museum. So also try this thing. Sometimes it's really nice. When you don't, when you don't want to spend a lot of time setting up help, uh, setting up a chart museum, so it, it's re it's really interesting. And now we're ready to go to security topic, guys. So every security topic, I guess, it starts with architectural diagrams, and I guess it's a good tradition because we need to know about all components uh, and how them interact uh, each other. So here we have a lot of arrows. And I want to start with Helm client. I guess you know this is your uh, utility on the laptop, for example. And a Helm client fetch uh, charts from Chart Repo, right? Uh, another thing that's uh, hosted in your cluster it's called Tiller. So Helm client uh, point through uh, config and talks with your cluster with Tiller. So today we'll talk about these arrows and try to secure these communications. And now I'm talk we'll talk about this in details. So we're going to start with the first and super important thing. It's uh, RBAC. Uh, so guys, you need to turn your RBAC on. That's kind of mandatory stuff. I, I know it's kind of pain and <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it can be really a problem, I mean, in general. But you need to do this, and Tiller, of course, supports service accounts, and by default it runs with uh, your default service account. Uh, 
but you can uh, create your own service account for Tiller. But one of the problems that you need to start with uh, creating roles and role bindings manually. So Tiller will use uh, already created uh, roles and roles binding into service account. So this is uh, how you can change the permissions of your uh, Tiller, because Tiller connects and interacts with Kubernetes and DI inside your cluster. So continue this topic. You can uh, ask a question, how can I create a more than one uh, profile for my Tiller? And for example, I want to use more than one service account uh, with different uh, permissions. So unfortunately, Tiller doesn't provide you a multi-tenancy by default. So the solution is to create as many Tillers as you want. So you can place your Tiller into a specific namespace and then configure your Helm client, for example, for TMX, uh, to point to the specific tiller in the specific namespace with, of course, a defined uh, service account. So you can create as many uh, profiles and tiller as you want per developer, per team, or in general, per environment. So the next thing, how we can uh, secure release information. I guess you know that uh, Helm uh, stores the information about the release uh, in objects called config map. So by default, it's not super secure to use this. So you can change this behavior and define the storage type secret. And Tiller and Helm will automatically use secrets instead of uh, standard config maps. And here I have another question for my last ticker pack. So the question is, why we have this limit about one megabyte in size per, for secrets and config maps? Sorry? Yes, you're right. So, and yeah, that's a really nice answer. So, technically, of course, in each CD we can um, specify more, more space, but one megabyte is quite a nice, let's say, number to work in an efficient way uh, with this data in general in gRPC, so they decided to use one megabyte. By the way, we will have the same limit also for secrets, not for config maps. Okay, so it's pretty easy. Just define a uh, new type of storage during the process of init, and uh, Tiller will use uh, secrets instead of config maps. So, okay, uh, let's talk a little bit about chart repos. Uh, how to connect and communicate with chart repos. Of course, you need to use HTTPS connection and expose your uh, public repo using HTTPS. So the next uh, interesting thing uh, that you can sign your charts, like you sign your, I hope you sign your pull requests uh, in GitHub. So it's pretty easy also. It's a PGP, so you can install this infrastructure and use sign charts. Also, Tiller supports uh, TLS, and you can define TLS certificates during communication with the Chart Museum, for example. And Chart Museum supports basic auth, so you can add extra layer of auth using uh, basic auth. And as I mentioned, Helm GCS supports uh, GCP auth, so you can use this plugin to have your own private repo with auth. So this is kind of a heart of uh, Helm in general. So this is Tiller, and Tiller supports native TLS over gRPC. So by default, it runs without TLS, so, so you can create your own uh, PQI infrastructure, right? Create your uh, certificate authority, and then uh, use it uh, by default, and of course, uh, define these parameters uh, in, in the client. So it's also easy and it looks native, so please use it and you will cover all scenarios where your Tiller communicates uh, with a Helm client or Helm client communicates with Tiller, it's more correct. And when your microservice from cluster communicates with Tiller, also it's possible. Some, some guys use this technique to uh, manipulate data during the continuous integration process. So it's super important also. And finally, we see the secured picture. So all of this arrow secured. So we can tune every communication, and it, it will be nice. I mean, to do all this stuff. 
So uh, finally, that's it. And I want to mention a few words about the next version of Helm because it's really interesting. So looks like Helm 3 is the next big thing. I mean, uh, community and guys after Simon decided to create a new document and proposal. So first, uh, huge item. It's a single server uh, design, so no more tiller. I guess it's a great news in general. So the next thing that uh, Helm uh, becomes more native for Kubernetes is, you know, uh, CRD. Who knows, by the way, what is CRD? I, I don't have stick. Oh, okay. I don't have secrets, but I guess somebody knows. Okay. So it's custom resource definition, right? Is the way how you can store your data uh, like releases natively in Kubernetes. So the next huge thing. Uh, it's uh, supporting embedded load en uh, engine instead of Golang templating. So it's also, I guess, a great thing to try. Finally, we will have the ability to define the types of values. Uh, for example, you can say that my value, like, I don't know, it's, it's a string or number, for example, it's quite useful. And finally, guys decided to uh, refactor the whole module and use single event-driven model to different events. I guess it's a super nice. And finally, uh, this is really great, but unfortunately right now the status is kind of design proposal document. You can read it, you can contribute it uh, in GitHub, but there is no version, so we need to wait a little bit to try the new version of Helm. And finally, I guess you know something about alternative, alternative tools uh, and utilities. So. I want to be short and show you my, let's say, picture, how it looked like in general. So I tried to create some picture with, uh, with the two, let's say, in two dimensions. So one dimension is kind of your control, how you can control uh, and integrate all these tools like Helm and KSonet, for example, uh, with your infrastructure. So the other dimension is how it's native for Kubernetes. So we'll start with Helm number two. This is the kind of initial position for our graphic. So the next big thing, it will be Helm three. It's more native and more control for you. A mm, little bit more control. So as you know, KSonet will be somewhere here, I guess. It's just in my opinion. So somewhere here near Helm two. Uh, so your configuration management, I guess it's a quite typical solution to use Ansible, Terraform, or something with plugins to manage your Kubernetes and create applications. Of course, uh, it provides you more control, but it's absolutely native for uh, Kubernetes. And important player here, it's a CoreOS uh, community kind of child, so it's called Operator Framework. And I hi highly recommend you to Google and if you don't know about this, and tweet and try. So it's, an, uh, it's also kind of the first step of uh, Accurator framework, but it's more than one key starts on the GitHub. So it's, it will be more native, I guess. And you will have a little bit maybe more control than uh, Helm version 2. And finally, of course, we have some add-ons like Draft and Sculpt, for example. Uh, so they, of course, improve the control, how you can integrate with your pipelines, with, with your continuous integration. So they will add some more control. And it looks like this is the picture uh, for alternative and Helm version 2 and 3. And you can choose what to use in general. Yeah, and that's it. Thank you, guys. I'm happy to answer it. Yeah, by the way, sorry, sorry, I need to make a photo because my wife, she asked me to provide some kind of proof that I'm not drinking beer. <laughs> sorry, sorry, it's, it's just a formal thing. Just smile and, I don't know, raise your hand, something. It should be in selfie mode. Ah, yeah, yeah, because, yeah. There we go. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thank you. Do you have any questions for yes. Helm? Yes. Uh, do you have any experience using Tiller's integration with HashiCorp Vault? Oh, it's a great question, by the way. Yeah, I missed this thing. So when I mentioned that you can switch uh, or swipe, let's say, using uh, Config Max with secrets, the main idea that secrets 
technically, I guess you know that's also insecure at all. I mean, in general, the same idea. So nothing special. It's just the idea how to have um, one more namespace for future to create some integration. So we start using uh, HashiCorp and Vault to secure our secrets. So technically, it's an integration with uh, between, let's say, Kubernetes and HashiCorp Vault. It's not about um, Helm in general. So the idea to provide Helm a storage uh, like a HashiCorp Vault. So that, that's, that's the idea. I think we got time for one more question before we move on to our next speaker, unless... Do you have any? We got some stickers. Yeah, by the way, guys, we have more stickers, I guess, so find guys with in T-shirt chain stack oh, yeah, and yeah. ask them, uh, please give me a sticker or die. I oh, know, just, just give me a sticker. Just take it from them. They don't really eat all that well. Okay, so we're good. Alex, yeah, thank you. Thank you.